I'm going to make money off that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like me. Like, I just put myself out there in a wrestling match. It'll be a match. great clip. Yeah. Like. No, I want to use the excuse that like, Gable did it. And I said, that's not funny. And she goes, yeah, it is. It's so, like, I'm like, I'm not fat. Like, I got really mad at her. You in the middle of match just oh, go, help me. <laughs> he, like, pushed Paul in the face, like, out of bounds, like, talking to him and stuff. I was like, dude, talk to him. I was, like, yeah. screaming, like, talk to him back. My senior year, we had to wear masks for this. So my partner Bailey's parents and my parents. So there's four total people who support me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Clash of Combat podcast. Today, we are joined with none other than... Matt Bianchi, most known as Maddie B. Fatty. Yes, sir. How you doing today? I'm doing great. So Maddie B. Fatty actually drove up to our campus at Parkside. We really appreciate that. No problem. This is this is yeah. Fun. Thank you yeah. so much. We just finished dude. our practice and I'm hurting. This is my first practice back from vacation and man. Yeah, Kane's crazy. been slacking off. Yeah, dude. dude he's, no, but he's in Disney World. Oh, that's so cool. But yeah, I came up and like I stepped right out of my car and I totally forgot that car rides. My hamstrings like almost seized up i almost called you guys because i'm like i'm gonna <laughs> I'm, i don't know if i can make it to like i'm i need like a walker but oh, wait, I you're hurting from lifting dude squatting Ooh, you squat well, today yesterday oh killer workout <laughs> do you wrestle today no not yet because i did bring my shoes just in case but mm. if we don't have to i mean because we got to oh okay. if you're here we yeah as well. i mean we got to i brought the mat man wrestling shoes what are those dude the mat man's so I love cheap stuff, so I always look at like what I can find that is just way out there and completely different because I don't like being similar with other people kind of. So sure. I always look at the rare shoes, but the rare shoes are so expensive. So yeah. I was scrolling through wrestling shoes. I saw these mat mats. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I remember those when I was little because the wrestling coaches used to have the black ones with like the gum bottoms, okay. and they look so ugly. But I saw these like white ones with red, yeah. And I just said to myself, I gotta get these. Guess how much they were? Thirty five dollars. What? For yeah. some wrestling shoes? Thirty five dollars. So I I bought them instantly, and then I put them on at practice. And they have pretty cheap leather, but they're thirty five bucks. So yeah. I didn't really care. And I wore them, and everyone looked at me and was said, "Dude, what are those?" And I said. I'm wearing these at Las Vegas and World Team Trials. And no then way. I did. They're good? Dude, yeah, they're that, pretty that solid. That begs the question, why are wrestling shoes so expensive? Like, you can't buy wrestling shoes for, like, less than 150 Oh, not anymore, yeah. It used to be around 70 bucks, but, yeah. yeah, they're so expensive now, which is why it's good, like, that now I'm in college, so I get some for free. Well, and when you, you put somebody's name on a shoe and it skyrockets by 100 bucks. Oh, That's yeah, true. instantly. Well, and I even DM that, man. They never DM me back, but because <laughs> no. I don't think they make the shoes anymore because I only found them on eBay. Oh. But they make a bunch of wrestling stuff, so they don't really – Makes sense. I don't think they care about shoes, but I DM them, like, saying, I'll rock these shoes all day <laughs> in, like, freestyle season when I'm out of season. guy. Exactly. I'm like, Maddie the Matt Man. Like, I'm Yo, like, dude, well, it, like, works, works so that'd well. Be a, so. That'd be a Maddie shoe. Exactly. But what shoes did you get from um, your college? Just, Just Nike you, yeah. and Flix. Nike and Flix? Yeah, we're, we're Nike and uh, – Little Rock. He goes Little yeah, Rock. Yeah, Arkansas Little Rock. Go Trojans. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're Nike, which Nike's awesome, especially for singlets. They make – I would say Nike makes the best singlets. Mm. They're just comfortable. They're firm. Like, they go right to your body. But they're, like, stretchy. How did that go? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> stretchy, like, right, right to your body. So I like the Nike. And now uh, we got a new coach who came in, Austin Schaefer, who's a little younger. So he works with us kind of, and we kind of bounce ideas off him. So mm -hmm. now it's, like, most of the team – that's the cool thing about being a new team. We can make kind of the new designs. Mm -hmm. So we're repping a lot more like the LR. That's what this is. Okay. So it's like it's like L in sign language, and then the R is this. So then you mix it, and LR. So this is like your gang sign. Yeah, pretty much. So I, <laughs> I hold this up because uh, only like the track athletes were doing it and stuff. Uh -huh. So I was like, guys, that's kind of a cool like thing to yeah. put up. And I was thinking like if I win a cool match, I'm like, I can put this right Yo. to my forehead. Oh, and, oh, and no. like, and I'm, on him. Yeah, and I'm thinking they can't yell at me because I'm like, no, no, it's just our, it's our school thing, like right this. But I, I will say that they took a picture of like mid doing it because sometimes your fingers are a little after a match they're like a little yeah. shaky, yeah. right? Yeah. And I went to try to do it, and I messed up. So there's a picture of me like pretty much flipping off like the camera like down no downward, and I'm like, 
I'm like, oh, that looks bad. I won't post that picture. What, what do you think about um, kind of showboating after the match and kind of giving a like a little flexor? Oh. You, saw, you saw that video of Christian Carroll pulling down the singlet, yeah. flexing. That was both on the mat. Yeah, that, okay, so with the freestyle thing, mm-hmm. that's always been a big rule. Never pull your singlet straps down. So it's like, because it's so like disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Why? I'm all for, I don't know why. It's always been a rule. Like when I first started freestyle, my coaches always told me never pull your singlet down. Really? I don't care if you lose. Never pull your singlet but down. But then the Mongolians can just take off their shirt. Yeah, and like rip <laughs> off their pants. I'm like, jeez. I'm like, jeez, wrong channel. But I'm like, so I'm, I don't know. But, yeah, I always was told never take them down. Even if you lose, like don't take them down. And now it kind of transferred to folks. So like I try to keep them up. But um, I'm all for showboating. Like especially something like that. He's made a world team. You yeah. know, I celebrate, dude. 100%. Like, do a backflip. Like, that's sweet. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I wouldn't use the excuse that like, Gable did it because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Because that that's kind of hard because Gable's kind of like the oh, – he's such like the face and mm. the WWE. So you he's turning into like such a cool performer because – and I think the WWE is helping him because it – you know, he hypes up the crowd like does like the ear thing. And I think that's so cool. But he's, he's bringing a lot of hype to wrestling, which is cool. Yeah. You've lost four – Team points at state for yeah. celebrating every time. Every time. Four? <laughs> every time. Oh, that's the yeah. four backflips. Yeah, yeah. I did the backflip. So in sixth grade, um, my brother went to state his sophomore year, and he won state. And then also with him, um, one of his teammates won state, and his teammate did a backflip right after. And right when I saw that, I was in sixth grade. I said, I gotta learn how to do a backflip because I wanted to do that exact same thing. And that's also what like opened me up to thinking I can do this i can Mm. win state like my brother paul did so Mm -hmm. um i instantly tried doing a backflip and i learned probably three months later just by myself so i just learned how to do the round off properly and after that every time during a break in practice we would have like a five minute water break i would try it on the crash pad and i would just fail like over (laughs) and over again and almost hurt myself like quite a few times but then i finally got it on the crash pad instantly went off the crash pad landed it and then someone said, do it without a round off. I said, no, I don't think I can do that. And then they're like, just do it. So <laughs> I did it and I landed it. So then after that, I do backflips. It's like riding a bike. Yeah, pretty much. It's all about confidence. Every everyone, single person, everyone in this room is athletic enough to do a backflip. It's just the – Not com- him. No. Oh, come on. I'm telling no, you. Not him. I'm telling you, dude. He can't do a handspring. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Dude, don't even do it. <laughs> a handspring is pretty bad. <laughs> no, I can just do momentum. A front handspring, I can do. I couldn't do it until like two years ago. Dude, flashbacks are just rolling in my head. <laughs> it, to- it, 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 I might not get it first try. Okay, all right. But go, 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 wait, going back on track. Do you think that the Bianchi family is the deepest wrestling wise in the state of Wisconsin of all time? Because what, eight state titles, right? Eight state titles. How many? How many? Brother, you have four brothers. Four older brothers, yeah. And you have a sister that's in wrestling. Yep. So some guy actually put on Facebook. I I wish I remember his name, uh, but he put on Facebook. Uh, there's twelve state final state twelve state finalist appearances and eight state titles so far. Wow. And that's including and the, the my sister. only other or and th- thirteen state appearances. Okay. Yeah. And the only the only other family that is eight is the Marcos. Yeah. The, I was just gonna mention the Marcos. Yeah. I mean, having two two brothers, four time state champs. I don't know. They have a younger brother. I'm pretty sure too. Come I don't on. know if he's that much into wrestling, but sure, he should probably get on I, that. I mean, that's uh, that's arguably that you have that the, that deep because your your um your sister still has what? How many? Three more years? Yep, three more years. Yeah. Okay. And I wrestle with her, dude. She's mean. Girls nope. are mean. Well, and there's wrestlers. Only, they have girls wrestling only. Yeah. So she doesn't have to pull a Macy Kilty. Yep. Oh my gosh, that was the <laughs> craziest thing ever. Macy Kilty and Zach Anglin. That was the loudest I've ever heard from being in the stands. Yeah. Because think about it. You're either going to have a guy with no hands and no feet or a girl in the state finals. So it's it's kind of like, what do you do? You just do? have to cheer. Yeah, what do you do here? <laughs> and and then it was also like, because you never know if he's standing or not because he's just on his knees. Mm-hmm. And so they called, like, locked hands. And then it wasn't locked hands when they called it earlier. And it was so crazy. And I'm not blaming the refs, though. I wouldn't know how to score that. But that was such an awesome match. And that was so crazy. Because Joey was also wrestling my other brother 
in the state semifinals that same time. Mm -hmm. And he said, dude, my chest was vibrating. I was wondering what was going on. And we were telling him, you should have been seeing this match. It was crazy. <laughs> no one was watching you. Yeah. That, 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 I, that's what I told him. I said, I was watching, but to be honest, I was watching that the whole time too. I was like back and forth just that's the whole funny. time. So your family is, is of course known for wrestling, but you specifically have grown a following on TikTok, not because of wrestling as much. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's be honest, the dancing, right? Yeah. The dancing. So man, so I started TikTok. I, I knew about TikTok because it used to be the musically thing. Mm -hmm. So I started TikTok because I was 15. I was I happened to be talking to this one girl, and she had TikTok. So I wanted to make fun of her. So I made these TikToks, and I just th threw a few out there. I was, and then I told her, um, I said, man, I got like 3,000 views on this. And I just asked her, oh, does this happen a lot? Like a lot of followers happen a lot? She goes, no. I, I'm like, oh, well. I just got 6,000 in one week. And then I, um, I had a lot of time on my hands outside of what I would get done with wrestling practice. And then I was just kind of my time because you're in high school, so you play video games or do whatever. And I took my time uh, watching TikToks. And there was always these Chinese, Japanese creators doing like these cool shuffles. Mm -hmm. So I just took my time and re would rewatch the videos over and over again until I learned the shuffle. And then I did the dance, and then a lot of other people, I guess, couldn't do the dance, so they would think it's really awesome. And then I just kept doing that, so that became my thing, shuffles. And then I just became, imp I just started improvising with a lot of dances. And when I saw a, a dance trend, I would just hop right on it, and it usually did pretty well. So I really hopped on with that. And then I started dancing with my shirt off too, so <laughs> that kind of that kind of helped. I got my. I, I got a question there. Does that attract more female or male audience? I'm telling you right now, definitely male audience. Unfortunately, <laughs> there was there was a. I definitely got a lot of attention from girls around, which was great. But there was, of course, I'm sure. I, I know a lot of wrestlers get weird DMs from certain people. Talk but, about it. Oh my gosh, it's just. I would like I'd be in class and my buddies would be around me. And they always ask, can I see your DMs? Because sometimes there would be an attractive girl in it. So they'd look through. And then they were, they were like, oh, my gosh, what's this? And I'm like, don't <laughs> open it. I, I'm, I said, dude, I've made the mistake in opening that before. And it's just nasty. It's, it's just always nasty stuff. So it'd be like the blurred image first. So you do a tap. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man, I don't know if I should do it. And then you're like. Oh, gross, gross. Wait, there's then. dudes sending you, like, nudes? Yeah, what? all the time. On Instagram? Dude, all the time. Have you seen the accounts that will, like, screenshot, or, like, there's people that screenshot stuff off his video or off your Instagram, yeah. and they'll zoom in on, like, oh, his singlet bulge? Oh, I'm oh, posted dude, on I've, so many. Yes, dude, I've seen like, so many. Could, but it's, like, because I don't want to be posted on that. Like, yeah. what's the and regulation? You, you can't, because you technically posted a picture on a public platform, so anyone can take that picture and do dude, whatever they want with it. there's a picture of me and Crosby, like, doing like this, like the Step Brothers. Yeah. 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 Dude, it's um, – I was put on one my high school year, and there's some guys out there who they're, – they're into that kind of stuff, but they're not the weird type. Mm. So they'll message me. Like, hey, someone's copying you on Grinder or something. <laughs> or, hey, um, someone put this on Twitter and it's got 12,000 likes. And I'm like, well, send it to me. I just want to see. I'm just, yeah. I just become curious. I mean, who's not curious right. about that? And they took my picture of me at a tournament in the Dells or something. And I'm wearing like a gray singlet. And they took it and just enlarged it so much. I'm like, that is definitely not. I mean, Dude, that is not crazy. just, that is not just to me at all, but it was so funny. And I always laugh about it because it's me, I'm putting the, like, sure. it's me putting the pictures and us wrestlers, we don't really think like, no. we're not looking. And no. so then when someone else who ne doesn't know wrestling sees it, they're kind of like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 That's no. When wrestlers get the wrong rep. Exactly. Because it's really weird because we're very, I think most wrestlers are very, anti that because you kind of have to i mean you're wrestling with a guy like yeah you're such you're so close to your wrestling partners because you wrestle with them every day and you 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 like try to beat them up every day yeah. but then you're still friends afterwards it's right. a crazy relationship so i always saw that and i always laughed about it and thought it was so funny and even um our school got so we have you all you always take pictures before school year right mm. like in your singlets flexing sure. and all that stuff so we did that, and this was like from my freshman year, 
they took pictures from that and then just made the pictures like this and like zoomed in on what it was and put like something something along the lines of call it little rock for a reason or like (laughs) it was so funny i'm telling you right now it was on twitter with over four million views on twitter no or it might have been it might have been up there even more than that but it was crazy the amount of views i i might still have this i can show you maybe after this i might still have the picture on my phone but i laughed about so hard and our school got involved saying you got to take these down and stuff and it's like just we can't pictures in uniform it was like yeah it was our our uniform pictures and it was on like the smug mug or whatever okay, you yeah. call it i don't know there's different platforms but um or websites and we told them we can't just take it down it's a public picture and it's mostly from our guys instagram because we would post yeah. the pictures and they take it from that so we told them we're like we can't really take this down and then they were trying to tell us um okay well then every time you take a picture of them in singlets, you got to, like, blur out their bottom half. I'm like, you're just going to – That That's, is going to be the biggest joke in wrestling if you guys do that right now. you will, We will be laughed at at every single person, especially them who's taking the pictures and doing yeah. that stuff. They're going to make fun of us even more. And I told – I was – and then even our – like – the people who work with us are like, that's the, we can't do that. Yeah. Like, that's just not going to happen. I got a question for you. Yeah. Have you ever gotten DMs to sell your sweaty wrestling All gear? the time. Brian, sweaty Brian socks. Bathke? What? Brian Bathke? Yes! <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh, dude. He's a no menace. If you guys He's a do, menace. If you guys do not know, there are people who will DM us All saying that they're going to the spend hundreds time. of dollars on our like sweaty underwear and sweaty wrestling gear and ship it to them. One of my buddies tried to do it, actually. Tell me about it. So the guy wanted to meet him. Well, I did for the exchange, of course. And um, IRL? <laughs> but uh, my buddy was like, oh, some of you guys got to come with me. Because like, he wasn't going by himself, of course. And then the guy ended up backing out. Like, they were in the parking lot. I think the guy just backed out. But I've also um, – I was with my brothers one time, and I was getting weird stuff. And they just asked for an ad pick for, like, $1,400. I'm like – Easy an money. ad pick? An ad you pick. You said yeah? You got it? Well, I said yes, and then I was like, but I'm not going to send him mine. Cause, oh, okay. uh, so I go, like, <laughs> it probably looked weird in my search bar, but I just looked up teenage guy with abs. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> then I took a screenshot, and then he said, oh, but I got to do it over, like, a Zoom call. And he kept lowering the price. I'm like, you know what? I'm the product here. <laughs> I make the prices. And then I just ended up blocking him. But Because um, sometimes, I mean, I'm like, maybe I can get a, a little bit out of this. But some guys just Venmo me random like thanks for the instagram picture and i said what the like it, it's not even like a weird instagram picture but they say thanks and then how much do you get from that not that much it's a few like it's like a tip sure <laughs> it's like a little tip and uh, so why don't you start an only fans dude i've well actually i got a lot of that was a, a lot of my dms was like what's the of and i kept i'm like of <laughs> like i i kept i didn't know what it was for a while i didn't know what of was and then I, I asked someone, I was like, what's like OF? It's all capitalized. They said OnlyFans. I was like, oh, well, what's that? And then um, like the Paige Van Zant, Paige, o- oh, Paige yeah. OnlyFans Van Zant. Like, so I heard about it and then I said, oh, no way. Like, why would I do that? <laughs> but then maybe it's like, maybe you could just put, you could, cause you can make one just put yeah. honestly like innocent stuff on there. Yeah. And, Maybe I'll just do that. Maybe I'll just, it'll be all like links to like my like merch or something or like just like random or just my Instagram. Like it would just be that. But I'm also not, I try not to scam people. Yeah. Right. But it's so, oh, it's so bizarre. It's such, and that's a big reason I don't like tagging like my family members a lot because mm. I don't want them getting weird yeah. stuff like that. So, I try not to tag them that much, or if I do, it's, like, so hidden that you wouldn't even be able to click on it, and, because it's just weird. It's a, I can handle it, but other people sometimes can't handle it, and it's weird to them, but since I kind of was joked around with it so much, I just got used to it, and now it's whatever, but there are some good moments that happen. It's not, it's not just, of course. it's of not course. just that, but it was funny, because I did look up, when you asked me the guy or girls, I recently looked up the rating, it was, like, 69 percent men and 31 percent. yeah okay and it was it was so funny but 
there was good moments like um, Fargo. Fargo was always awesome. Mm-hmm. People would DM me asking to take pictures prior to Fargo. They asked if I'm going. I said, yeah, I'm going to be here on that date. And they said, like, oh, can I take a picture with you? I'm like, of course. That's <laughs> And I I, I, was, I would, like, blush because I'm yeah. like, that, that's so cool. Was like, Fargo the experience you took the most pictures at, you think? I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I was – my buddy had a massage gun to the back of my neck because, you know, Fargo, it's like wrestling over 10, the double-digit matches. and um, If you win. <laughs> if you make it far. <laughs> if you make it far, yeah. Um, and my, I was face down in the concrete, and my buddy's got a massage gun to the back of my neck because it hurts so bad. And I get, like, a tap on my shoulder, and I look up, and it's like, half the California girls wrestling team. Uh, and they're like, can we have a picture with you? I'm like, oh my sure. Do you want to like entertain them? <laughs> the Dopa Band is a resistance band used for building muscle and improving athletic performance. The unique thing about it is that it's longer, stronger, and more elastic than any other resistance band. With Dopa, you can work on strength, endurance, technical skills, and muscle growth. Dopa can be used as a portable multi-trainer that you can carry with wherever you go to even the most beautiful places in the world. Join Dopamino and the world's number one resistance bands with the largest online training center. And a word about our service, full one-year warranty for quick delivery to your home. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. So there is no more excuses. Join Dopamino today to change your workout routine forever. No, I did <laughs> not. I could never, I could never hit a dance. Or like they would ask me like, be in my TikTok. And I'm, it's mm. so, like I'd have to say yes to everyone. And I'm just like, I don't have things like on the spot where I could be, everyone get in this. Like, sometimes I think of like group, big group ones, but then it's not anything that I could just have someone jump in. It's kind of, I don't know, it's just up in there. It's, it'd be like someone coming to you guys and being like, dude, let's put me in a YouTube video right now. Yeah. And it's, it's just yeah. like, you can't really do that. And, um, but yeah, that was a whole California girl scene. And then 20 minutes later, same thing, massage gun in the back of my neck, like 10 girls from the Pennsylvania wrestling team came up to me. And it was, it was just really, really cool. And I thought it was, I thought, oh, this is the cool part about mm. this. Because even though it's like, I, got, I did it without wrestling, that was a big thing. I I had the dances and everything, and then I started posting some wrestling stuff too. And then people actually started commenting, wow, he you do something real? Like, you do something other than this? I said, yeah, I have a whole other life like <laughs> that is much more important to me besides dancing on TikTok. And um, so I think that really backed it up because then – Seeing like a content creator do something, then seeing that they do something super serious too, I think draws a lot of people in. So I think that drew a lot of people in because they start seeing me like, you know, say I wanted to do this goal and like like do it and then like win it like pretty high level events. And then it was also really funny because I would post sometimes highlights about some people I beat. And people would find their TikToks because everyone's got a TikTok account. So people people would see it and then tag them. I'm like, why are you doing that? It's yeah. not like beef. It's just, <laughs> but it'd be really funny because there was a few people, you know, like you at Fargo, uh, I beat Jackson Arlington in the, or Arrington, sometimes I get the name wrong, um, in the third place match. And then people were tagging him in the comments. Oh. I'm like, oh man, that makes it look so bad. But then me and him were in the comments like, oh, that was a good match, sure. dude. So it was cool like that. And then the same thing with I I ran a guy into a table recently. Yeah. Like oh my at, gosh, at we La, have to talk about that <laughs> at Las Vegas, <laughs> and um, we were literally talking because we wrestled each other. Then a few weeks later at World Team Trials, and um, we were talking, and he was he was a really cool guy. We were just talking like yeah, like no beef, like it's just you know happened to happen, and um, <laughs> and he was that was wild. He, yeah, <laughs> but he was he was really cool. Uh, uh, Tyler Lillard, he was really cool, and. He was saying like, uh, "Oh, dude, it was so funny." But I, I showed up to the, the lunchroom. I, I had my head in my face, my shirt. I was so embarrassed. I'm like, "No, dude, it's Jeez. fine." Like, but no, nah, it was really cool. It's never like beef. It's just, yeah. yeah. I, I, I have a story actually um, about like wrestlers. I, everyone I wrestle, I feel like they know they're gonna get on video. Whether I win or lose, I'm gonna post it. Mm-hmm. That's my thing, right? And I was. This is. After nationals this past year, and we're in the elevator, I did an all American. I lost to Tate Murdy in that match, and we, this was after finals. We're like going back in the elevator, or whatever. Tate Murdy's mom walks in the elevator. We don't know if it was her mom. His mom. His it mom. It was definitely his mom. No, she said. Okay, just keep going. Okay, I think it's definitely <laughs> his mom. But she goes. She looks at me in the elevator. You know, I think she was drinking. She goes, mm. oh, 
you're that guy who posted that video of Tate. And she goes, come here, give me a hug. And I was like, but she, she was more like saying like, um, I don't know that she like, she was super, super mad. Like when I, I posted the video, but she like gets it now. Yeah. I mean, I think it helped that her son beat me for all American, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's always the weird thing. But, uh, junior duels too, my senior, that was so much fun. I got, I wrestled, we started off with like Colorado and I, I tech the guy and I, um, go to like shake the coach's hand and then all of them whipped out their phones and were like, Maddie be fatty. <laughs> and I just kind of like pointed at him like, do, do you have any bad moments? Cause I'll, I'll share one. I got tossed, sent to the gulag on um, in my second match with Greco at uh, World Team Trials. Mm. And as soon as I get tossed, I'm, I'm out. I'm done. You know, these are the guys that only train Greco. Yeah. I'm walking back to shake his hand. I hear from the, the corner, like, all his buddies are there. Put that in your YouTube channel. <laughs> like, all that. Like, I don't know, dude. It's like, yeah, I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to make money off of it, bro. Like mm -hmm. if I win or, I mean, of course I try to win, but yeah. I don't know. It's I think like, it's, yeah, you can always throw that back in their face. Like, you're making my content. Yeah, like, it's crazy. But honestly, no, I haven't really had that much of bad. But I, but there was like one of those kind of, I don't know if there, I don't know <laughs> if there. Is he laughing? I don't know. just sounded so dumb. <laughs> Wait, Sorry, me? Said, oh, yeah. oh, I, I I'm going to make money off that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what, what else am I going to say? No, I'm sorry. It was no, funny. you got to no, act hardcore. That's, that 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 like, that's what he was picturing himself in the moment. That's what I he would say. No, that. Was yeah, funny. well, it's like it me. Good. Like no. I just put myself out there in a wrestling match. It would be a great match. clip. Yeah. Like. No, <laughs> you're, really, you're really putting pressure on yourself because you're always like, yeah, you're like, you got the camera out. So you're putting like, even though like you might, you could be up against like, freaking uh real woods mm. and the pressure would be on you still somehow a little bit sure. because you have the bigger platform yeah so that's the thing but it's um, how it works i don't know if you know this but caden actually anybody division one around his weight he can't beat and then when it goes to like the upper weights gable stevenson <laughs> yeah seth girls puts me in a spladel bo bartlett just wrecks me but i can latch up gable stevenson dude i saw that what that was real that? yeah that was legit I believe it. I wrestled Reese the other day. I was feeling pretty good against him. Really? Yeah. How big is he? Dude, he feels... I don't know. It's your teammate. I know, but I don't oh. see him. Um, he's got to be... Dude. He's got to be over 200. <laughs> he's he so fat. I shot I mean, a huge... Wait, I shot did a, he have a Mountain Dew for... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see it before. I shot a huge double. I was in so deep. And this man just hit me with, like, hips don't lie. And just pretty yeah. shucked me right off. And I just... I, I shook my How head. How much are you weighing right now? I'm only about 173, 174. Okay, now yeah. I'm gonna stop you here. Why are you called Maddie Be Fatty? Um, so that was actually my mom. So <laughs> I got an iPod, like believe it or not, the iPod, and um, she put that as the I don't know. At first it was whatever those emails were. I don't. It's not that anymore. But it was whatever those emails were that you had to sign up for, like Apple ID, I guess, oh, or yeah, something yeah. like that when I when I had it a few years ago and she said like oh look this is what I put and I said that's not funny and she goes yeah it is it's so like I'm like I'm not fat like I got really <laughs> mad at her but then when I was making my Instagram I thought I didn't realize I was typing in my username I, I don't know what I was doing but then I actually typed in Maddie be fatty and I just was like what did I just do oh no that's my username and then I was kind of mad at myself, but then I just left it because there was no numbers in it or anything, and it was all lowercase, and it looked so cool, so I just left it and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then when I made TikTok, same thing. I just put Maddie B. Fatty. And then I just kind of rolled with it because then people start and people started calling me Maddie a lot more because that was my mom's nickname for me. So people started calling me Maddie a lot more. And then my sophomore year of high school, I, like, officially switched to, like, just call me Maddie. So if someone calls me Matthew or Matt – I knew I grew up with them because that's all. Mm. Like everyone back home, they'll tell me if I see them and stuff. They go, "Yeah, people ask me about you because I say I, I went to Two Rivers High School." And they go, "Oh, you go to school with Maddie?" And they get and they say, "Oh, I get so mad because your name's Matthew. It's not Maddie." I'm, I'm like, "Yeah, whatever you got." But then I tell them like that means that I grew up with you guys. You know mm. the OG. Sure, makes sense. Yeah. What do um, people know your? Joey asked, do they know him as Joey Shreds now? Or I, do they know him as the help me guy? I think the help me guy. Dude. They started coming up to me because they confuse us a lot. And they they asked me a few weeks ago, someone asked me, they said, you're the 
the guy? I said, <laughs> oh, well, that's my brother. And I, I, but it's like so funny that, oh my gosh. I think a lot of people kind of know Joey Shreds now because he sure. just kind of made that name. Yeah. He was like Flowy Joey for a while or something <laughs> like that. And then he was mixing with a bunch of names. But I, Joey Shreds is kind of cool. Yeah. Dude, he has like, I, don't, I was just looking at his TikTok. It's like his last like 10 videos are over like oh, a million views. Insane, dude. They all have like a million likes on them. Yeah. Views. Oh, crazy, dude. It's it's so crazy how simple the human population is to, <laughs> for something to be funny. Just screaming help. And like the funny thing is um, we were – so we would kind of do that beforehand. Like it wasn't just like just that thing we started. Like we would just scream sometimes yeah. like um, out car windows, like whatever, just messing around. And – we got out of the, our car, and I showed him this video of this guy who did it. It was like a Chick Fil A worker. Yeah, because he I, that guy that was that was him it, that, invented that. Yeah, oh. that was the original. Like Joey, Joey really did blow it up. But that guy had just yeah. one video that blew up, and that was him. I said I sent it to him. We both laughed so hard at it, and I said, "You should like scream, help me, because he's got like that very screechy voice." And um, then we got out of the car. He did it. No, there was no recording though. And then. I saw like a girl walking in the distance and, or she was walking towards us. I said, do it, do it. And he goes, no, no. And then she walks right by. He goes, that's why you wanted me to do it. I said, yeah, you didn't see her. And then we go up and we're about to get in our room, just about to get in our room. And then I said, here, do it, Joey, do it. And like record yourself and just send it in the team group chat. So he does it, he screams, and he's like, look at all these napkins. I'm like, yeah, buttload of napkins. And then he just screams so loud, and it was so funny. Then we walk into our room, and then he, I told him, I'm like, make sure you save that video. And then he saved the video, and then I said, post it to TikTok, dude. I guarantee you. I'm like, that is so funny. I guarantee you someone will like it. Yeah. So he's like, okay. And then he posts it, and it does so good. Yeah. The next day, we're in the same type of hallway, and – we got coconut pie and like I'm holding the coconut pie and he videotapes screams again and that time because we were friends with a lot of the athletes um a lot of people called the cops because they thought so <laughs> it's Little Rock and we sure. live on we live on Asher which is like the not good part of Little Rock like oh. the university is super safe but like we're like right on like kind of like if you go down that street it's like oh that's okay that's not what you want to see uh but it's so funny. So they, they, got, we got the cops called on us, and I never found that out until someone told me, because they were like, "Well, someone might be hurt," and we're like, "Oh, never really thought about that." But it was just kind of. But then everyone in the, it's a, called the villages. So everyone kind of in the villages just kind of found out that he, we were doing this. So then when they would hear it, they'd go, "Yeah, that's Joey." <laughs> and then, and then we started doing a lot more, and then or he started doing it a lot more, just like figuring out different ways to kind of do it. And now it's just so funny. Yeah. It's just all the time. I was waiting for him to do it at the world team trials. Dude. Cause that would have been crazy. There was a lot of people coming up. Could you imagine? It. Cause Kale Sanderson was there. Yeah. Kerry Collette was there. All these wrestling legends, right? I can see him like, he goes, I'm here with Kale Sanderson. Kale goes like, his like smile. And then he goes, oh, man. <laughs> Dude, and, like, why did he, he do that? Oh my gosh. I told him, I said, I said, Joey, if you, if you pop off, and you like win, I will throw you your phone, and you in the middle of match just oh, go help me, <laughs> all sweaty like at like has like someone who's like I don't know Julian Ramirez or Patty Gallagher was like really they were like top seats just have them walking away going like help, <laughs> help me <laughs> like I thought that was so funny I I think because he does it like in public places I'm sure. like. I'm like, he really should do this Dude. like at a wrestling event because a lot of people think would think it's funny because they know that he does it. Like a lot of wrestlers do. Mm -hmm. But, oh, my gosh, so, that's just been blowing up. It's so funny. What did your coaches think of your dances with TikTok and Joey's screaming? Oh, my TikTok? gosh. So with the dances, they kind of made fun of me a lot with it. Of course they did. But, like, then they'd be they'd say to me, put me in one. I said, you're making fun of me for them, but, but, uh, they, you know, cause they're just teasing, but then I have put them in a few, like where they got, you know, like 60,000 likes and stuff, which was really cool. But, um, the screams, honestly, I don't, I don't know how much they know about how many videos he's done screaming. Like, mm. I don't, I haven't really talked to him about that, but all our teammates know, and like, we, we love it. And I bet they have to know. They, ha they definitely have to know. If not, they will soon. I mean, because if he continues on this pace, he'll have over the United States population of views for his help. Yeah. So that's a lot of people. Dude, it's... Why, why, why didn't he do, like, 
Is he thinking of like doing like a brand deal, just holding up? He's somebody? he's got like a protein powder, and it literally says, "Use code help." Like that's really? the thing. It says code help. And he's got this cool protein powder. I forgot exactly what it's called, but he's got that. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but he is. I do believe he's doing something with Tootsie Roll. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like the candy. Yeah, and I don't know what exactly he's gonna do. Dude, I tell I'm you thinking, what. I'm thinking, I'm like, dude, you're screaming, and someone just shoves a real big tootsie roll right in your mouth, and you just shut up. Dude, have like the big ones, the monster yeah, ones. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like those, like yeah. or like even like a, but just like you, you can be in the background, like you know the napkins. I got yeah. this foot long tootsie roll. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then it's like he's screaming, it. dude. That okay. It's so he, easy. He it's so a, easy he marketing. Make a killing. Yeah. Like an actual killing. Yeah. That's what I told him. I'm like. Dude, Caden's telling you to like do it. Like it's I'm like, Caden just gave, came out with ideas in like two seconds. Opportunities for you. do not come like this often. Oh yeah, and especially like on you'll that always level, it'll, you'll fall off a little bit. Yeah. Like it, it you'll you'll ride it and then eventually it'll go down because eventually people are like, okay, it's the same of thing. Of course, but but yeah, definitely needs to take advantage of it right I t- now. I tell you what, he's in a really good position, but there's so many ways it could go. Yeah, like he could literally make a hundred thousand dollars by the end of next week. I'm yeah. not. I'm not really? lying. He could have a Lamborghini sitting in your driveway. Joey, I okay. hope you're Come listening. On, no, Joey. I'm not lying. Joey, I hope you're listening. I'm not lying. If it gets 10 million views, do you know how many people pay for 10 million views on TikTok? Oh yeah. And if you, like companies, yeah, it's Cause, crazy. Because the TikTok, they only, they don't really like. TikTok gives you money for views, but even a video like that, you will only get like a views in the millions. You get like a hundred, a few hundred bucks, I'd say. A multiple, you're getting in the thousands now, because mm. like it just racks up, but. It's like when you work with a company, yeah, that's when you make good crazy. money. It's crazy. Yeah. Like I worked with uh, Native, which was crazy to me. They're a shampoo company. Mm-hmm. And well, you they got were, the flow. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I got it. And like, <laughs> you know. And uh, but they reached out to me, and I thought that was so funny. And because it was so random. And but I loved working with them. They were really, really cool. And they're a good company. So I, I didn't mind promoting them at all. But whenever I'd make one, I'd. Asked Joey to come along with me because Joey's got the cool camera, and I was like, "It's way we both make money because mm-hmm. we don't work." Because so, like you know, so I'm like, "Joey, like hop in, you know, help me film this." So it was always cool doing that. But yeah, it's so cool because Joey's a very like has so many ideas and like just funny. Like I feel like we could have a real. It would be better than the Kardashians if someone followed us around because we just it's so funny. <laughs> like it's like nonstop laughing sometimes. Yeah. So you need a reality TV show? Exactly. We should make that happen. We should make that Sponsored happen. Sponsored by Clash of Combat. The the Bianchi reality after you guys TV are done, show. After you guys are done wrestling, you could like be a documentary crew where you just follow around like the Parkside team. Or <laughs> if someone else wants the documentary, follow around whoever Dude, whatever college wants to give yeah, you the money. Hopefully we're, hold on. Hopefully we're Light bulbs Parkside. are just coming on. It's us making documentaries on things, but you're there's companies documenting us documentary like it that just confused me <laughs> Dude. like say it again i'm talking a documentary crew is following us yeah who are creating documentaries on who oh. on us no that who, would are actually, we, who are we documentary the documentary yeah. crew <laughs> no, it'd be like, <laughs> it'd be like no, yeah. an, i was like wait yeah but <laughs> but that's what i'm saying because because joey and you or you you guys both kind of do your season right and you're wrestling in your season mm-hmm. but imagine if that was just your job to follow a team around because they already do that right they follow like nfl teams around sure. and dude and no stuff one like does that. it in wrestling yeah no one and, does and wrestling good level wrestling is crazy behind the scenes you don't see the cutting weight mm-hmm. like it's like the people literally mentally breaking sometimes like you don't see the, that the stuff. in practice fights the in practice teammates. yeah in practice fights like that that stuff goes on a lot it's not just like it's always usually love after but like it's there's a lot of stuff yeah. that goes down cuz and the fights in wrestling it. they get they're already kind of the fighting without punching so then you throw in the punches you're like oh shoot we got to yeah. break this up yeah we I'll we've had guys we've had little guys go up against the heavyweights i'm like what are you you i'm like you guys are about to get really hurt like stop <laughs> yeah. i have never seen a fight in practice until i came here and then it was like our coach is like preaching like you guys got to fight in the room, but then you can be friends right after. Yeah. And it's like, dudes Same. are, There's like, a dudes fine are going line. out of the, out There's of the room. There's a very fine line. Mm. Like, dudes are hand fighting each other. They're pushing each other out the door. It's like, yeah. that's oh. And that's always a big thing when the freshmen come in. 
Is they always try to be yeah. pushed around. And and when I came in, I knew that was gonna happen. Um, so I was kind of already prep prepared for it. Plus, like whoever I was with wasn't really beating me up, so it was kind of like you can't push me around if you're not really killing me. Mm. Like, but I do remember one day I got I got uh, legs put in on me, and the guy wasn't cross facing me. He was sticking his forearm in my mouth, and he like oh, he was like trying to like break my jaw. And it, it hurt really, really bad. But I and then I t- I got reversed on him, and I I just started cross facing him like really mean because oh. I threw in the same legs and he rode me for like twelve minutes. It was like a, one of those long goes, mm-hmm. and I I just right after that I said that's never gonna happen again. But then afterwards I'm like yeah dude that was crazy like you're so strong up there and then we were just talking like talking about how we almost like really hurt each other yeah. and dude. then um yeah even last year like wrestling another guy on my team and. He would just punch me like if he, if he got frustrated, he'd punch me in the face and what? like yeah, like he would he would like club. It's like a club. It was like this, so I knew it was a little bit of love because. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he hit me like right in the face when he would get frustrated, but like I would kind of just bounce my face right back and I would kind of get happy because I was like, oh, I know I'm getting under his skin, so it kind of make me like laugh and like so I would pressure him more until like he'd like walk off the mat. But then afterwards, it's like it's like I didn't really I didn't like hate him. Yeah, you know, I don't, I hope he didn't really hate me, but like it was just that's what happens. But usually when someone kind of does that, I'm like, oh, you're breaking, yeah, and it's kind of happy. And like, I don't need to do that. I can just keep the pace on you and stuff. So I, it's kind of always fun. I think that's one of the biggest differences from high school college is the, the like the fight. Yeah, like it's it can get dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like, Definitely, <laughs> we've had guys like like really get hit in the eye and like had to take like time off. <laughs> like one of, one of our guys had to wear an eye patch cause he got punched <laughs> in the face and like, but he got punched like in the eye, like his eye got cut. So he Jeez. had to wear an eye patch. But, um, that was pretty funny. You, but <laughs> you know, what? I'm just thinking, and it was so funny cause I'm breaking up. It's like, I'm never going with you again. And then they like <laughs> wrestled with each other like three weeks later. Like it's like, yeah, right. Like you guys don't mean it. You, you brought up, of, of course you kind of knew that coming in as a freshman. Yeah. You know what I can't tolerate? is when freshmen come in and like or even just at a, at a practice and someone like they want to prove a point either yeah. to themselves or coaches and whether it be in warm-ups or drilling they take it live and so then it's like okay now i have to go live. yeah yeah like i want to get to that spot where it's like it's literally flow like it's literally play wrestling and it's it's difficult it's so difficult to have someone to have that mutual relationship of like i don't care if you take me down and I hope you don't care if I take you down. Like we can flow, we yeah. can learn, we can actually get better at wrestling instead of like, okay, who's actually going to get this takedown so like the coach can see who took him down. Yeah. Like, and I think you need that that live in there is always super big because it's the competitive edge for and sure. But there's, competitive I think edge there's and, a time. Yeah, exactly. And but I learn the most probably when we spar. Like I love sparring and it's high sparring. It's just like there's moments where I think to myself, oh. I could have won that, but I'm going to let him finish this out because mm. he's doing something correct. Yeah. So I'm going to reward him for that. I'm And and you can kind of – you should be able to kind of talk to your guy if you're sparring, I think. Like pause maybe and say something. Or I will talk as I'm going and just go jokingly like two – or now it's the three. <laughs> three. Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, I love that. But then live is so cool when you got to flip the switch, like no talking and it's – and then that's always fun for me when I can do that, especially when you're in the mood. But obviously, you gotta be able to do it whenever. Yeah. But when you're in the mood, it's it's fun to say. Like I don't really think of him. You know, you try not to think of him as your teammate. It's just like a blocker. Like same thing with Joey when I was wrestling with Joey a lot and Paul when he was down there. Um, I would actually always go really hard against Paul because I'd want to beat him because he's so he's he's a south Paul too. He goes left leg lead. And I hate it because you think you just shoot on his left leg. And he just knees you right in the face, and and he's so like like pressure is crazy because I thought I had good pressure, and he's just in your face, and it's so annoying. So you really want to try to beat him up, but um, we would have crazy matches, me and him. And then same thing with Joey. Like we got our coaches would sometimes think we're not competitive because we're brothers. I'm like, no, I'm I've never beaten him in my life. I'm gonna try to beat him. And I like I only started um, beating him once I bumped up weight class. I got bigger than him, and I started beating him then. But before that, I never beat him in a match, and then one day in practice, I beat him in a match. I and then I didn't tell him, but I said to one of my teammates, I said, "I just beat Joey for the first time ever," and it was like so cool that Dang. 
I finally like I was like, oh, I did that. But now now it's like you know it it brought the edge out because the next day like he just came at me. And it yeah. was it's fun though. I like it. I want to go back to talk about more about your high school wrestling. Yeah. What were some of the moments that made you think like, holy cow, I could be a four time state champion? Or were there any moments at state? Because I, I know you had one at least where it's like you were down. And you had to make a comeback, like, fast. That was twice. Twice? Yeah. So, but we'll start kind of earlier. So, um, in eighth grade, so Paul was then a three-time state champ. Like, he, he won third. And he, he pretty much made himself very dominant. Um, and and he, he really was. He ended with, like, a 205-6 and six rec- record. Only losing to people, like, he lost, like, Austin O'Connor 6-4. Like, that's crazy. Like, two-time NCAA champ. And, um, but... That was probably – Paul gave me – Paul, like, made the path for us. So um, it was pretty easy to follow Paul and Joey because I saw what they did, and I, I took exactly what they did, the good things, and I followed. And then the mistakes they made, I cut them out. So um, when I was about eighth grade, people were asking me – like, I would go to, like, just the little rinky-dink middle school events, like where you'd wrestle for your actual middle school, and they'd say to me, or, like, their buddy, like, oh, this is going to be the four-timer. And it just kind of, like, I kept getting told that. So then I started believing it. and and uh, But I took it one step at a time. I wanted to win my freshman year. And I remember um, my confidence just became really, really good, especially right away, because I lost, like, 3-2 to Caleb Gross, who was a two-time defending state champ. I lost to – and I only lost, like, Eric Barnett, who obviously – now he's a two-time All-American. He was a three-time state champ. And – um it gave me confidence. Just I lost them, but it was it just showed me I'm right there, and I'm I'm so close to them, and I'm I'm 14 years old, and they're you know 17, eight, going on 18, and it was super cool. So I was getting told that, but just like random people, I didn't even know. They're like, "Oh, you're gonna be the four timer. You're gonna be the four timer," and and I kept thinking, "Yeah, I, I could be the I could be the four timer." And so freshman year, I I trained a lot at Askren, and um. My teammates were Joey, um, Cody Holmes, who was a two-time state champ, three-time state finalist, and uh, my buddy Bailey, who ended up being a two-time state finalist. And just in the room, I had, like, three guys you could constantly bounce off of. It was awesome. So my freshman year, I'm, I'm wrestling at Askren's, and um, I'm talking to one of the guys, and he goes, like, oh, like, you think you're going to make it to state? And I, was, I said to him, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to win it. And he goes, you're going to win it? I said, yeah, I'm going to win this. And then <laughs> I went and I outscored my opponents like 28 to 1. Like, I didn't really have a close Jeez. match. And then the next year, I really wanted to prove myself because I wanted people – I didn't want people to think it was a fluke. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you had an easy bracket. I was always told that growing up. I had an easy bracket, especially for my brothers. Like, because I'd win something, they'd be like, yeah, bracket was easy. Soft bracket. And so I, that was a big thing. I wanted to prove them. And what weight did you win your first one at? One thirteen. Yeah, that doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> that's what everyone told me. They're like, nah, you gotta be one twenty and above for that to count. And um, so the next year, I put on weight. I was going one thirty two. Me and Joey started taking lifting a lot more seriously. And um, like I never squatted before. Like mm-hmm. so, I started squatting and like just put on weight. You know, grown boy. And Joey lost in the state finals three years in a row. The state same guy. And so I won my freshman year state. Cody, Cody, my teammate, lost right after me. And then a match later, Joey lost. So I got my state bracket, and I put it in between the hotel bed and the wall. And I just went to bed. I was so upset. Like, because I won, but it was like my teammates lost. And especially my brother lost. I'm like, I'm not happy. Like, I just saw them lose, and, like, I was trained with them, and it mm-hmm. didn't work out. And it was so frustrating because I thought I started them off good, like winning, because that's always a big thing, like being the first one to win. So the next year was like a big thing. Like we could, all three of us can win. We've all proved we can be in the finals. Cody Holmes won already once. We've all been there. We can do this. So year three comes along, and the person who's in my weight class now is the guy who's beaten my brother three years in a row in state finals, who made me, chills, yeah, made me feel absolutely horrible. Up in the stands, just seeing him lose and, like, literally, like, not being able to move and then, like, being down there. Then my my, sec- my freshman year and seeing him lose, like, on the floor just, like, killed me. So this year it's, like, I, just, I got so excited when I saw him at my way. I'm, like, yeah, you're going to – I'm going to beat you, dude. Like, 
not just one. I'm going to beat you every single time I wrestle you. So then, uh, and with him, um, this guy, like, all respect to him. Like, you know, he got, he always got the job done. He won the matches. And, uh, but we wrestled, he was from Luxembourg Casco. So they're in our regional, sectional, and state. Oh. So he wrestled a Bianchi person in all four years of his regional, sectional, and state finals every wow. single year. Every single year, every single tournament. So regionals comes along. They're doing the seating bracket. And um, my coach, like, said, oh, I tried to get you the number one seed in this little regional bracket. It's only, like, six guys in it, right? Um, and I was like, oh, really? And he's like, you got it. I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, that's funny. And um, they were so ticked. They're like, this is a three-time defending state champ going for his fourth state title. And my coach, like, literally looked at him dead in the eye and goes, yeah, but what has he done for me lately? Like, because I was a state champ. I had a better winning record. And my only losses were at Cheesehead that year, which is a very tough tournament. I, got, I took, like, fifth that year. I only lost to people outside the state. And um, so I got the number one seed. I think it kind of messed with them a little bit. And we were in, like, this rinky-dink high school, Valders, which is a very small city. And we filled that, that place up. It was packed. So we meet in the finals, obviously. We're wrestling. Zero zero classic. Like his matches were always super super close against like the good guys, and he'd win by one point, like ride outs and stuff like that. So I knew I could never get to that point. So we wrestle, and uh, I just I get a nice shot, take him down right on the edge. Um, in the second period, it was zero zero in the first, and uh, it was like I was winning. I was like two zero, and then it was like three one, and then something like the, it ma the match ended like four two. I got up and I gave like a little shrug to the crowd. <laughs> And um, then, like, uh, my teammate Cody came up to me because he wrestled before me. Now he was lighter. He's like, nice, dude. Like, you controlled that whole match. The Casco coaches were like, it was 4-2. And, and then Cody gets in their face like, doesn't mean you still can't control it the whole time. And, like, so then we wrestle again at sectionals. And um, same thing. Got, kept getting this, like, single leg slash double shot and beat him 3-0 this time. Didn't even score a point. And at the end, I rode him out, like lifted him up, planted him back down, pushed him off, gave a flex to the crowd because nobody <laughs> liked their team. And now it's State. So State comes along, and I actually get put to my back in my quarterfinals match. Like me and uh, this one guy I was wrestling, we both went for like a cradle and turned into each other, and he locked it up on oh me. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. Yeah. So I, I went straight to my back. And like thankfully, his arm was like across like my – like weirdly. So my shoulders weren't touching, which was good. Uh, so I fought off my back. And even that, the, even when I fought off, I tied it back up. It was like five five, but then it was like eight eight going in the third, and I ended up winning thirteen eight. But it was like that match, like it was like all in my head, like oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Like what am I doing? And and um, but semifinals come around, I have a pretty tough guy, and I just smoke him. Like it was like thirteen zero, absolutely smoke. So I'm like I'm feeling good going to the finals, and uh, as soon as we go to finals, the the match starts. And his knee just drops to the ground, and he's on one knee. And it was the the leg I constantly shot on. He drops the knee. I was like, I knew he was gonna come out with something. They always do. They're 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 very well coached. So uh, he drops the knee, and then first period, nothing happens. We had a few exchanges, um, but nothing happens. Zero zero. I choose down. Get my get my normal escape that I always knew I could get. And then he chews down. I'm like, roll him out before I can do it again. And was riding him out. Get called for stalling, actually, when, like, my arm got stuck in his legs. And me and him both looked at the ref like this. So the ref stops it, but then gives me a stall. I was like, that's weird. But the refs always give stalling to whoever's winning. So now it's 1-0. I'm riding. And there's, like, 30 seconds left. I'm like, oh, I got this. I, I roll him out last time. Do it again. Somehow I mess up. He gets an escape. And, like, so the whole crowd goes nuts. And he's an overtime guy. That's his thing. The overtime matches are always his thing. So... Everyone's thinking, my mom's even, my mom told me she was thinking like, oh my gosh, it's going to happen again. Like, that's what she's thinking. So no faith in me. But, um, <laughs> but when he escapes, so he had his knee down the whole time, the whole match. That was his thing. He kept putting his knee down. So he escapes and I see him like just pause and he, he stands up. His knee's not on the ground anymore. And he just took like a slight pause. I could tell because he, he kind of sensed that like I kind of took a pause as well. And I think he sensed like, we're going to overtime. You know when you like telepathically agree like overtime, 18 seconds left. And as soon as he paused, I just took my normal shot. I got right in, lifted up, and as I lifted up, we're the only match going at this time. All the other divisions are finished. 
the whole crowd goes, oh, as I lift it up, I feel my chest vibrate. And like, and then I just do a huge front trip. As I front trip, all the cameras were right here. And they just go flash, 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 flash. <laughs> and my mom said like, she couldn't even see anything because it was all flash. And he, he drops, turns into me, and I just collect both legs. There's a picture of me like coming over my arm, collect both legs. The whole crowd goes, dude. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I, like, I took him down, and I look at the clock, and there's still like 10 seconds left. And then my coach is like freaking out. They're like, wrestle, wrestle, like keep going. And I just grab him the leg, you know, like yeah. head out right there. And uh, before the before the match, um, one of my teammate's brother is like, do you know what you should do? put like four up and just slice it across your throat if you win i'm like no dude i won't do that and then Cause is this for your third this is for my second oh second so so yeah i'm a sophomore and so i, I ride him out the whole place is going nuts i get up and i just i hit my backflip and as i hit my backflip i went like boom <laughs> right across my throat and like shake his hand hold up the little two and yeah that was awesome and then and my teammate Cody won right before me, and then uh, there was a match in between. But then Joey finally got his state title, and that was the best right there. Was when Joey won. Like we we all ran off the mat, and like I ran off the mat, like holy crap, like that just happened. Like that was a quick six minutes, and um, I ran off the mat, and it was cool. And then me and Cody were like sitting in like the stands watching Joey, like you know doing the lean. Like he had a close match actually against Ben DeRocher in like three two or something oh, like that. Right. Yeah, it was cra- it was still a really <laughs> close match. It was very like, and he won, and like he ran over to us, and we got a big hug, and it was like that was like the best feeling ever. Like that year was just so perfect. It was so awesome. So that was like, oh my gosh, I still, I still like, I watched the match then like a week later, and I was on the edge of my seat like freaking out, like and watching myself. I know what happened in the match, but I got so nervous, like and chills again. I get chills every time I watch it, but it was just, it was so cool, and like such a cool thing and i posted the video on instagram and actually like mark hall liked it like and this was when i was 15 mark hall didn't know who i and like yeah. he liked the the video i was like that is so sweet like he actually liked this video and so that was really cool and then yeah that was probably the my best year of high school just like for just the thought of it and i came off the the mat and i was in the crowd and i ran up to my mom got hugged and someone got a picture of that which was cool but um i was in the crowd and people kept coming to me like dude, thank you. You won me so much money. Like they were placing bets on the match and stuff. And like in the whole wrestling form was like, is the little brother going to get the revenge for the big brother? So it was like all that. And that was really cool. And then, um, my junior though was also a big thing. A lot of people don't know about this, but I, so I went to super 30. I had a very good summer. Like, you know, uh, I placed third at Fargo in freestyle. And then I took, uh, um, fifth in, uh, Greco. But, like, my third place Fargo was good. Like, I beat, like, uh, I think I beat Matt Killick in the third place match, who was a very, very good wrestler. And um, I uh, go to Super 32. I lose in the blood rounds like, Josh Edmond, who's also very, very good. And um, I'm like, oh, dang it. Like, really wanted to get that, but didn't. And I'm at practice one day, and I, I hurt my wrist kind of, like, power cleaning. And it like, I, like, it, like, bent back. I was like, oh, gosh, that really, really hurt. And then, like, it healed like a month later, like, oh, I didn't feel anything. And then it felt fine. So then I'm fine, but then I'm wrestling at um, a practice, like a club practice, and I just hit it down like this, and it just it hurt so bad. I was like, oh, what the heck? That was so weird. And after that, it hurt every single day, and now still every single day for the rest of my life. So it still hurts today. So, um, But I didn't realize then, but I broke my wrist, and it didn't swell or anything. And it was, I broke the scaphoid bone and it's the bone that makes you go like this. And so it was like really crazy. So I just kept taping it cause I kept taping it. I took probably way too much ibuprofen and I would biofreeze it every single day, every single day for practice. And it was a real big problem. I would be wrestling and I, it would go limp and I kept going to my mom. Like, I don't know what's wrong. Like my wrist was really hurting again today. And, um, she just kept saying like, well, it's not swollen. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand like what's wrong. It's not swollen or anything. And, um, I even went to my girlfriend at the time. I told her, I think, I think my wrist might be really hurt. And she goes, well, it's not swollen again. And her mom's a doctor. She goes, I don't know. Maybe it's something else. And then my aunt who's a doctor is like, maybe it's like a stress fracture. Maybe you did kind of hurt. I'm like, okay, we'll just consider it a stress fracture. And then mm. I just kept taping it. 
And, uh, but it was a big problem for folk stuff because I couldn't ride people because I would grab their wrist and then it would go limp and like fall off. Yeah. And I, I, I had to protect too because every time I took a shot, if it got hit, I would like drop down in the fetal position in practice. So it really, really hurt. And uh, Bailey, my partner at the time, was really a big help because every time he grabbed it, he's got crazy grip. He'd grab it, and I would like wince, and he'd like ungrab it for me. Like during the whole, even during live, he would do that for me. So it was a, it was a really big deal that he was doing that for me. And um, it just sucked really bad the whole time. So I couldn't ride anyone. So going, and I, I would just wrestle, and I would wrestle with it like in my hip because mm. it just hurt, and I went like this. So I was learning how to shoot lefty then. And just, like, try and figure out different ways I could do this. And um, I ended up still placing, like, third at Cheesehead, which was really good. And um, I was pretty proud of that. But I kept thinking, like, what is wrong with my wrist? And um, my coach would be like, you okay? I'm like, my wrist just – it's I can't do anything. I can't – I couldn't uh, grab stuff. And when I could barely lift up, like, dumb – like, 20-pound dumbbells. Like, it just hmm. wasn't, wasn't working. And um, so then state happens. I get thrown in my back right away. So I'm down like uh, I'm down five zero right off the bat, just like just like the year before. <laughs> and I looked to my coaches. And I was just like I kind of giggled in my head like, I guess we're doing this again. So I had to make like a, another miraculous comeback. And I did it in the last like 30 seconds, like winning 10 seven. Like I put him to his back once I tied it up with takedowns. But again, I couldn't ride mm -hmm. like I put him to his back with a chin drop. Thank God. But I couldn't like hold on the tilts. And then the same thing in my finals match. There's actually a picture of me in my state finals match, and it's hidden in my hip, and I'm, like, out like this because I couldn't – I just couldn't do anything with it. And then uh, COVID happened, so everything got shut down. So we were, like, might as well go to the doctor. I mean, there's no Fargo or anything. And then I go to the doctor, and we took x-rays. I'm like, honestly, Mom, it looks pretty good. It looks like all the bones are in place. And the doctor goes, as you can see, a clear break right here. I was like, oh, my gosh. And he goes, I don't know how you were wrestling – with that wrist and I said you have no idea how painful it's been like I took like I was taking like probably like 12 ibuprofen a day like what? throughout the day like every four hours I'd take like three another three another three and like I was icing it nothing was where I would ice it to numb it before practice and then I'd put a buttload of biofreeze on it and like people wrestle me and be like oh dude I'm like sorry the biofreeze and um so I've just it was numb like at all times I tried to keep it numb and it just, it hurts so bad. And then um, I had to keep it casted up for like nine weeks. And then even when it got back, um, it uh, became like a non-union break. So the bone never went back together. So there's a, a metal piece holding this bone. And they think like the bottom of it, like the bone might have just like died or something. Mm. And so the bone never went back together. So now <laughs> it's like a lot of construction workers actually have this injury. And they basically just say to you, there's like, you're something you got to deal with for the rest of your life. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just figure it out. So senior year, I wore a club actually for the start of it. And uh, I couldn't handle the club because, again, I couldn't grab anything. And with the surgery, it got a little better, like a little bit not as painful, but um, it was still hurt. And it's still like like I can't, uh, I can't like bend it all the way, but I'm always like, you know what? A lot of people have done a lot worse. So sure. I've seen a lot worse people. Um, so like with ACLs, like, I mean, look at that expensively. So I'm like, it's just a wrist. Like I can figure it out. So I have been figuring it out ever since, but that was a big thing. And then my senior, um, one went for my fourth state title and that was really fun, but we didn't get in the coal center and we had to wear masks. We had to wear masks for this. So, um, we didn't do it in the coal center. We did it at another gym. So only people in the stands were, um, my partner Bailey's parents, cause he qualified for state. And he, he made the state finals that year and my parents. So there's four total people who support me in that. Jeez. But I mean, I had a lot of support throughout the state, but like yeah. two are from two rivers. Fans like, weren't really allowed. Yeah, weren't allowed. And we had more masks and we couldn't shake hands before we were about to wrestle the guy. And I was like, what? But then for the state finals, we all went out there and shook hands. And I like joked to the guys like, like, oh, we're all going to have to quarantine after this one, guys. <laughs> and like, it was so much fun. It was just kind of joking around yeah. and uh, like all that, but it ended up being okay. But yeah, wish I could have finished in the Cole Center, but I'm glad we still had it. Like, you know, a lot of other states didn't, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's kind of like my high school yeah. like story, basically. Now you're at Little Rock. Yeah. I mean, 
Tell, tell, tell me about what went on into that decision because both your brothers go there. Yeah. Um, it, it's a pretty newer program in the past, what? Maybe yeah, it's, it's going on. It's like fifth year now. Fifth year, okay. Yep. And it's the only college with the octagon mat, which is so sick. Yeah. So um, I actually didn't want to go to Little Rock at all when it first started because my brothers were there. I didn't want people to think I was getting like thrown a bone or anything mm-hmm. like that. And then, um, but after being down there and like, I just love being with my brother. So like, you know, they're like built in best friends. So it's, it was, it kind of just ended up being like, no, this is a no brainer. Like I just love being with them and I love being on the same team as them. So just went and yeah, just been vibing down there. And the octagon mat is the, or we call it the rocktagon mat. So oh, nice. that's a little cooler, but um, yeah, that's really cool. And um, just kind of like, it's cool to be part of a team where you can like make the history. That was the big, like, selling point is like you could be the first to do everything and it's really cool because I've always kind of been a part of that like because two rivers like I always said like we weren't a good team but we produced like champions and that was the kind of thing like it was like I was joining the same thing you know our team's not going to be there obviously at like right away and it's still it's still growing and working but like but it's cool to come out of like it's cool to like kind of come out of somewhere that people wouldn't expect you to come out of and then beat these people. So a big thing, like I've, I've definitely always been a better freestyle wrestler. So like going to freestyle us open and you see like all these, all these little rock guys like popping off, like big one, Steven little, who's in the finals at the us open and at world team trials. And then like, um, me doing, I, I did pretty well myself, like sixth place. And it's funny. Cause you know, you go against like these Penn state commits and like just the big, the big, big, big 10 schools like indiana iowa and like you go and like compete at the same level as them and they just think like oh i'm at this big college i should do really well and Mm -hmm. it's like that's not always the case sometimes it's sometimes it's like you know it's you 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 can control how well you do you don't always have to be surrounded like that can help but at the end of the day it's it's you on the mat so it's you who's going to be the step up just because you're representing a certain school doesn't mean that you're automatically succeed, gonna succeed and doesn't mean that you can't succeed because you're at a different school. Sure. Yeah, so that's why I always liked, I always like kinda, I guess it's a little bit of underdog status a little bit and kinda just like people like looking over you cause I feel like I've always kinda had that, like I thought I, I would perform well and then like, you know, I got I got a few college like looks at, looking at me but then I would get I would have like a, a probably like I guess I would say a little bit more accomplishments than some of the other guys, and they'd get like more looks. I'm like, well, that's not what the heck. That's mm-hmm. not cool. Or like, you know, flow like posts about these other guys who like, like would get, and then when they get beat, they would just like, oh, try to like sneak it under the rug sure. or something. And it's like, it's like because if you weren't like a guy that someone liked, then it was just like, oh, you just like didn't get heard of kind of deal. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, going low rock, it's cool. Um, just trying to trying to like make a big mark there because uh paul was the first uh ncaa qualifier for that and when we went to ncaa's it was so cool um he faced the santo first match yeah that i was like like when he got that draw i was like dude paul i'm so pumped dude like, I, like, I remember watching that i was in my dorm it was freshman year of college and i'm like wait paul's wrestling to santo first round yeah. dude i didn't know DeSanto was that good yeah i knew paul was good He's paul's got a, paul's got champ. a really good pace and he was he already qualified for uh, and still weighs the uh, two years before that, 2019. Oh, okay. And you know what's crazy about the 2019 bracket is Paul and, um, uh, man, what's his first name? McGee. What's his Mikhail, name? Mikhail. Mikhail McGee. They wrestled um, first round on the backside. They oh. both lost their first match in 2019. And they, like, Paul went 0 2 that year because he lost to McGee. But it's it's crazy to see that they were both on the backside. And now you see McGee, like, looking for trying to get a national title yeah. a few years later. That's just that's just crazy to me how you see that in college a lot. But, um, yeah, it was so cool him being there. And I was so pumped for him to wrestle the sand. I'm like, dude, this is awesome. You get to wrestle a, a, a guy. A guy. Like, you beat him? Dude, you're going to go viral. Like, mm-hmm. like, I was so pumped for him. And then I was thinking, he doesn't really do anything special. He's just got a crazy pace. Yeah. And um, Paul got on a shot right away, and he was like, and after that, like, he, like, pushed Paul in the face, like, out of bounds, like, talking to him and stuff. I was like, dude, talk to him. I was, like, yeah. screaming, like, talk to him back. And <laughs> I was getting so hype. Uh, I just love – I love watching wrestling because I'm a competitor, but I'm a huge fan too. 
So seeing that was always was so cool. And also since I was there, I was wearing Lil Rock stuff. And it was COVID one, so only families could go. But there were still a lot of people there. And people kept coming up to me. They're like, dude, congratulations. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like, I, they just all thought I was Paul. I'm like, I'm not wearing any wrestling gear, and I'm up in the stands. Doesn't this kind of tell you something that, like, I'm not him, sure. like, down there? But that, that, that year. For qualifying? Yeah. Okay. Like, that year was really cool. And then, like, afterwards, everyone met in, like, the Union Station in St. Louis because it was all COVID. So no one could see their wrestlers until after they were done. Mm-hmm. Or after like the tournament, so everyone got done, and like everyone was in this like, like uh, Shane Griffin was over here doing shots with Stanford, and uh, RBY was sitting over here, and then um, uh, AJ Ferrari was over there with Jorge Mazdal. Like it was all in like this thirty yard like, ro- probably like a twenty yard room. Like sure. it was so packed, and I, like it was. So- and by then I kind of knew RBY then, and. Uh, so Angie, my little sister, got a picture with him. And, like, that was that was also another cool thing. Like, being, like, with the TikTok, it's, like, getting noticed by these really good wrestlers. Like, like them following me on Instagram. Like, dude, you like you <laughs> following me? And, like. Who are some guys? Like, Roman is a one. Uh, David Carr was a huge one. Mm. Cause, and he's such he's such a good, good guy. And, um, like, the big thing for me was the big moment where I was, like, wow, TikTok is, like the fame was kind of there like in the wrestling community was we went to u20s or something u23s and it was in lincoln nebraska and me and my mom showed up because we were going to watch my brothers and um my wrist was like broken at this time too like i had a splint or something and so i wasn't wrestling and i see david like uh, right outside the like the fence of a mat he's like coaching some guy and like i'm standing next to my mom like oh look that that's david carr and she's like oh sweet and like he kind of like glances, he goes, "Oh my gosh!" Runs up to me, goes, "Maddie, can I get a picture with you after this match?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Okay, I'll be right back." And like, then comes up, we take a picture. I'm like, "You just asked, you just asked me for a picture? Like, I I should be asking you for the picture, dude." Like, it was so crazy. Like, when when that happened to me, I I I that blew my mind. <laughs> I was like, like "That's crazy." Experience or something. Yeah. It's funny. And then we did like inst- some Instagram lives together too before. About we were what? like. He was trying to. I was trying to teach him how to dance. Like, and we had like a whole Instagram live. It was. It was. I think it was during that lockdown kind of okay. too, like where everyone was just on their phones and stuff. So like, yeah, I remember doing that. That was fun. That was Dang. funny. But yeah, just like stuff like that. It's just so. That was so crazy to me. Yeah. If you could write your destiny in wrestling, what? Because, how do I say this? Are you looking to just have wrestling as a career? Do you want to have social media? Is there something else? Where do you see your wrestling destiny going and your life too? Um, I think, well, wrestling is obviously going to be my number one, like, priority at all times. Like, something I really, really care about. And, um, but I feel like I was definitely blessed with, like, a social media, like, following. And, like, it's like, okay, you have these followers and, like, they like to follow me, and some of them really like to follow me for my wrestling. So it's like I feel like I'm like, oh, I kind of owe it them, like, you know, make some content, make something interesting, and especially with the wrestling. So I, I definitely think I always want to keep the social media with me, and especially now since it's like can be such a useful tool in the future, like getting jobs, like, mm-hmm. like for like say advertisement and stuff like that. So I think that's always uh, going to be a big thing. But destiny wise, I mean, yeah, I definitely I love being remembered as like a really good wrestler from the wrestling community. But it's also funny when people just, it's cool if people just know me from TikTok, like, oh, you do the dances. I'm like, yeah, that's me. And then like, or like, or you had the big cauliflower ear that one year at Fargo. I'm like, yep, that was me. And like, (laughs) it's just, it's cool like that. But I don't know. It's just, I guess I don't really need to be like looked at as any certain way, but just always that whoever meets me, it was like, oh, he was so cool. Like he was, he was a cool guy. Like, oh, it was so fun to meet him. Like, Mm. At, or like uh if i'm running a wrestling camp like uh like oh he was a really good coach like he taught me like this or something like sure. like i want to i want to be helpful to everyone and like even like some people like message me like oh can I have some can I have some gear like i'm like yeah sure like i mean i get new ones every year so you you can have these like i don't mind but you give away your college gear yeah some some people have been messaging me and like i just like i'm like pretty sure. much just like pay for shipping pretty much oh, like yeah. like cool. pay for shipping or like maybe i'll like throw in like a little extra because i don't know however much it is but um yeah. yeah it's like you know people ask me and it's like yeah no problem like i i waited for like a year to where i got more mm-hmm. to where like because some of my buddies like 
you know, I want to give some to my friends and they're, they've always asked. So I gave them a lot of my stuff and just like, you know, cause I want to give people who support me my stuff. And it's cool when it's cool when I'm walking around, I'm like, no way this kid's wearing a little rock shirt. Like that's mm-hmm. crazy. That's yeah. crazy that he's wearing that. But, um, yeah, it's always, it's always cool. Like giving to people cause like I said, I, I'm like cheap too. So I don't, I don't like having too much stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't mind. I'm kind of like a minimalist, I guess. Sure. Yeah. We couldn't give away anything, any gear. Oh, we, we get, get two, two things. <laughs> we get two <laughs> shirts. Oh, shoot. I took my shirt off. The shirt I wore to practice, like my only Parkside shirt I have. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's cool. We get some some cool stuff like throughout the year and it's like little presents. And yeah, but I always love, especially people in my hometown, like they're always like following my mom's Facebook or something like that, <laughs> like saying how cool it is or I like I'll get recognized in like our local quick trip and like it, that's really cool. So it's just it's just always cool being able to, you know, give back to some people or like like me and my brothers are running a camp like in mm-hmm. like two weeks and like, you know, just hoping to like have some fun and like ha- have people actually see us because that's a big thing too is like the the legacy you leave. I think I think a lot of people um, you know get caught up like in the college and they don't ever come home and and I think it's important to come home to see the people like you know so then they remember you and they're like oh my gosh how's it going and you give them the time of day like talk to them you know mm-hmm. and um i don't mind doing that at all so yeah i like that i gotta confront you about something yeah you posted on instagram no it was tiktok you might have done instagram whatever about the, your attack rating is yeah. 78 dude yeah, i don't know how that? i'm 92 i could tech follow you at that point dude um i just put in my real i was just being honest you don't think I was being honest? I don't. I don't think a lot of people are <laughs> really? being honest. I swear to God. Yeah, I, okay, you think you think so? I think the attack at like you think all these guys are just already. Oh, I'm the best ever. I got 99. No, <laughs> no, you don't. Okay, I'm. I gave really honest reviews. My what? strength is low because that's I can't crazy. power clean. That's that's crazy. I just can't power clean. I think that I should have like NA'd out of or like. Oh, okay. I I think I messed up. What are, with what that. are your numbers? Cause yeah, sixty seven strength. That's why I'm like, no way. I got like, well, I don't max out on deadlift, so I I just put like three fifteen. Oh, you could do it. Yeah, I think I could do more. Squatting is like my squatting is only like three forty five. I could do like a lot of reps like stuff, but I just that's again. I, What's your bench? I can't bench. Oh, cause oh. you're hard. Yeah, no I can't. Wonder. I can't bench. So um, I I was I like when it was hurt. Even earlier this year, like, it was feeling kind of better. And I repped out, like, 225, like, for, like, six or seven. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Joey's Joey can get, like, up in the 300s. And I'm like, well, usually I could kind of get near what Joey got. But so I think if I never got hurt, this would be. But, like, I can't even, like, lift the bar. Like, I can't even you lift, can do like. dumbbells? You just can't do bars? I, yeah, the bar's just, just like, yeah. it's so, like, restricted that, like, yeah. it or just, like, makes it hurts and it's just like it's not like the strength like it's yeah. just the pressure and so i just i totally like i work my strength conditioning coach is really cool so i talked like he's like very talkable where it's like like oh you just gotta be t-. no like if you're hurt like talk to him and like we figure things out so i do a lot of other different exercises where i get like pretty much a buttload of push-ups i do like but even with the push-ups i gotta get like a certain bar to keep oh, my wrist straight okay. so in wrestling i never feel it though like not as not anymore like after surgery um i never feel it anymore in wrestling it's like afterwards like oh my gosh like the adrenaline wears off and all of a sudden you like oh god that sucks but um but during wrestling like i never feel it and and i taped it for four years straight now like almost every day so it feels naked when i don't have something on it i'll tape it even for lifting but um yeah i don't power clean i don't bench um i do a buttload of push-ups and when i when it feels okay i'll do dumbbell bench but other than that, I'm usually like mm, not worth the risk. So I do a lot of just kind of a lot of other stuff. I'm always like, too like I don't think me benching 225, me being on my back benching 225 is gonna help me wrestle a guy. Sure. Like so that's kind of always thing. I'm like, what am I here for? Am I here to lift or am I here to wrestle? Sure. Like so that's why I I put that first. And I'm like I can do I can figure out other stuff. Yeah. So. That's why I always think. But, yeah, that's why I think it's so low. Also, my flexibility is bad. Like, it's yeah, bad. Yeah, it must be really bad. Dude, yeah, like you bad. can't touch your toes? Like 55 or something. Like I can that. touch my toes sometimes. But it's weird. Like, in the matches, you know, you know matches. Because you can have that I feel like I can be, like, in yeah, splits yeah. in match. I feel like they should take my rating in matches. But, like, it, like regular, I'm like, man, dude, my flexibility sucks. And, like, I try to work on it. and But, yeah, I was being just flat honest. But, like, that 
that rating humbled me big time. But yeah, I definitely could adjust the strength is definitely I'm like, yeah, yeah. right, strength. Yeah. Like the strength I said, yeah, right too. <laughs> but everything else like it's a really cool app actually, like with all the like the videos and stuff yeah. and like I mean, it's cool with the, how it's like wrestling based, like like uh Jordan Burroughs in it, Reese Humphrey Reese Humphrey is a freak athlete. He's insane. Like I follow sometimes like he's got cool ab stuff. So sometimes I look at that. Sure. Cause like I'm like, I'll copy that yeah. or something. But um yeah, that I I was like people are gonna make fun of me so much. But I'm like, I can't change my rating <laughs> right. though. It's my rating. So I just was like, gotta show it. Gotta show it. Nice. Um, maybe that's why I was keeping it to my last video. I was just oh, trying to maybe. show like other stuff that I was like, oh, I just gotta put it out there. Do you spend like a lot of time on your phone at all? Um I try not to, especially now I don't. Um, if I'm hanging out with the right people, I, I'm, like, never on my phone. Okay. But, like, you know, if I'm bored, maybe. But especially, like, people think I'm on TikTok all the time. I'm like, no, I, like, you <laughs> – I watch it when I'm sitting on the toilet. Like, sure. um, But I'm, like, I mostly just post, and then I just put it away. Like, I'm not really That's on some it. some self-control. Yeah. Uh. It's just, it's just like, yeah, I hate – and I, I like watching, like, movies, like – Plus, especially if I hang out with, yeah, like I said, hang out with my friends, my girlfriend, like, it's like, I'm just never on my phone because I'm like yeah. engaged in whatever we're doing. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I mean, I bring that up because I do got to bring out, I don't know if you're a speed fan. I show speed. Oh, yeah. He dude, he's so Ronaldo. freaking funny. He's so funny. Do you know he just met Ronaldo? Yeah, I saw that. <sighs> I dude, that. that was so funny. He was That's freaking so out. Legendary. I don't know if I'd like, so if I was so hyped to see someone, I don't know if I'd react like that. I just like don't, I think he I was think like he's, he's he just so like up for the whole yeah whole like time. I'm like dude you're gonna die you have a seizure and like me like if I was Christian Ronaldo I'd probably be like what do I do like yeah. like he's, he's like he's with like him. totally like he's slowly going down my waist and now he's getting a little too close I'm like <laughs> about to like double overs like lift him up yeah. like okay but no that's so funny it's so that's crazy that some some people have such a love for someone that they've never met before that's true yeah that blows my mind. Yeah. What about like? Would you act that way towards Jordan Burroughs? I don't Dude, know. Like, I've, did you see the video? What video? Of speed and oh yeah, yeah. If anybody it's... acts like that. Me I don't. I think Burroughs, wrestling wise, I don't think. I think no. But I have met him before when I was little. I like tapped his shoulder. Dude, this guy has the his shoulders is like someone glued a bowling ball to the top of his arm. Like I I touched it and it was like rock solid. I was like, oh my gosh, that was little. <laughs> And I was like, can you sign this sweatshirt? Like, and he signed it. And then I even met his dad. Oh, and I was really? like, oh, got to meet his dad. His dad's the one who birthed them. Like, <laughs> like, you know, put him in his mom. So, like, <laughs> so like I I was like, I, but there, that was uh, 2015 World Team Trials. Like, okay. when I was in Madison. Yeah. yeah I remember was, a long line of that kids. That was I, so cool, dude. I met David they, Taylor. I met Kale, um, Kale. I met, I sat next to Kyle Dake for like two hours. Because he's happened to be sitting there. And then I met Kyle Snyder, too. See, I think that's crazy about wrestling is that these figures, these guys are at the top, are so accessible. Yeah. Like, you look at NBA, no, no way you're meeting one, LeBron no James. No way. You look at MLB, him. no way you're meeting Christian Yelich. Like, yeah, Sohei Otani, Giannis, you're meeting him in the NBA. But yeah. wrestling, it's like go they're to a so like, and you can – They're like play. celebrities, kind of. Sure. It's kind of like what, like, Conor McGregor said. Well, UFC is, like, kind of like that. But kind of like what Conor McGregor said, like – I break people's faces for money and then bounce. Like he's not a celebrity. I think the wrestlers, like they're not celebrities. Like they train extremely hard to try to beat someone up against their will without punching them pretty yeah. much. And like that, that I think makes it, a, makes you a little bit of a different athlete. Not saying that athletes don't train hard. Like obviously other ones do, but it's like, because like their sports so elevated and it's not, maybe not as physical where it's like, you know, there, yeah. I guess it's, I don't know. It's just weird. I think of them as more celebrities sometimes, those basketball players. Yeah, makes sense. Do you have any more questions? No, I'm waiting for the fun fact part of the show. Oh, fun, fact. The fun fact. Do you have any fun facts? The, any fun facts? I do play the piano. Okay. Tell me oh. about the piano. Like, good? Uh, well, yeah. Like, uh, we took lessons when we were younger, and my dad rocks the piano. Like, he plays it really well. And he was I've never like, heard someone rock a piano. <laughs> well, like, you know, he could just drop down and start playing. And, like, that's me, too. Like, I just learned a few songs by heart and just started, just started playing them whenever. But, uh, yeah, I love doing that. Um, actually, um, I, I kind of wanted to talk about, like, how I moved the transition from 141 to 157. Yeah, I was going to ask that. I yeah. was going to bring it up. Because you wrestled, like, 143, at, like, in the summer. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're starting at – Division one at one fifty seven. Yeah, so that was that was a huge jump for me. So um 
the 141. So I finished out my high school season 148 senior year. So 148 finished out senior year. And um, so they were like, go 141. I'm like, okay, I guess. I kind of wanted to go like 149, but they, you know, they tell you something and it's hard to say no, like to these guys who are paying you to go to school and paying you to be on this team. So uh, I tried to do it and I made it a few times, especially during the red shirt season. You don't really like make it as much. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize that red shirt season is very difficult for people. Like, like, there was some sad moments. Like there were some times where I was like, dude, I might quit. Like mm. there was some really bad moments. Like, cause it was just the weight was so bad. I became very non-social because I couldn't go out and do anything. Cause I had to make the weight and it was really hard making weight, um, for like those opens. And then sometimes for like no reason at all, like it felt like to make the weight. It was sometimes just for the coaches to check the weight to make sure you weren't ballooning up and it was so hard for me to like keep my weight down I kept ballooning back up and my appetite was through the roof like the freshman 15 is real for those like <laughs> people who like just go to college normally that is real stuff because my appetite was just through the roof and like the workouts were so hard so it was like I kept trying to make the way I made it a few times and there was uh the big one was I ballooned up really bad after like the southern scuffle which really sucked because I um I made 141 and then I was out but my coaches were like you should train to like make the weight two times in a row so make it again tomorrow like one pound over so I stayed up I had to stay up I got done wrestling so I weighed in 141 that morning and I got done wrestling I was 150 and it was really really difficult for me to lose weight I didn't sweat much so I instantly started like running and stuff like oh my gosh I gotta lose like eight pounds and um like I said I don't sweat much so it was really really hard for me to do that and so I, I stayed up all night, like shower sauning and, you know, tried walking. I just kept cramping and everything. And I slept for one hour that night on the floor. And then like, Jeez. and I got there and I was like eight tenths over still. And my coach like yelled at me. I was like, I want you to, I like talked to him. I was like, I want you to know, like, I, I tried. I slept for one hour last night. I was like, I was up all night and like. And, uh, but we still had to run stadiums, uh, but, like that kind of sucked. But, um, but after that, I really ballooned up. I got to like 172 and then I, um, was going to go to Vegas and stuff at 143, 160 or 65 kilos, but I was 172 and I was like, I need a tournament or something to get me down to weight. So the Bill Farrell was coming up senior event mm -hmm. and my brother, my older brother, Paul was doing it. So I was like, dude, I'm already training with you to help you. I might as well do it too. So I was 172. I had 29 days to lose 29 pounds. So I was like, I just take a one pound a day. And yeah. that's basically what I did. And I made the weight and I look at the bracket and I have Dean Heil first round. Like you, you practically beat him. Yeah, I practically beat you him. But let, let me tell you how I warmed up for this match. So me and Paul were like kind of warming up and I kept getting, you know, you wear like kind of some sweats to warm up in. I kept taking a layer off, a layer off. I'm like, I'm so hot. Like I was overheating. My stomach was like full from eating like three bites of a PB and J. And, um, I ended up like stopping the warm up, and I just took off my shirt and was in my shorts, w laid down on the track and was like putting my arms on like the cold metal bars against the seats. And then I was like one of the, I was like the second match up. And I just told uh, my coach Chandler Rogers that time, like, just tell me when I'm up, I'll walk over there. And like, that's what I did. And that's like, I felt so bad and I wrestled and yeah, I, I almost won. I lost in like the last eight seconds. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I'm such an idiot, but you know, it's, it's whatever it happens. And then the same thing, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe my weight will be better for Vegas. Same thing. Like I got up to like 166 had to cut like 23 pounds, got back down, made weight, was wrestling, did pretty good. I lost to Vince Cornella, who ended up winning it that year and made the world team. And I was down 10-1, um, and he's so slick. And then I'm like, oh, I need his one takedown. Because I felt like he felt like a little lighter because he actually was. He didn't, he didn't weigh that much. And I took him down, and I gutted him four times. And then I, I was up 11-10. Uh, and I was like, well, look at this. And like, um, and then we kept wrestling and he ended up getting like a, a cheap tilt. Like I shot in again, got cheap tilt, 
one twelve eleven. I was like, unbelievable. I was so mad at myself. And then I started wrestling on the backside, feeling good. And then, um, but then we get done and I had blood rounds the next day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta make weight. So I instantly like threw on a sauna suit and I'm pretty sure I checked my weight before and I was like eight over already. So I'm thinking I'm like eight or nine over now. So I put on the sauna suit and like started running, did like a, a huge workout, got done, was like four and a half over. After that, I was like, oh my gosh, no way. So I like put on more clothes, went back down, lost to like 1.2. So I was 3.3 over and now it's 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, I'm exhausted. Like literally like a, going to fall asleep. And then, so I, I text my coach. I, I talked to my brother, Paul, who's helped me lose the weight. And I'm like, dude, I think I just need like, I need to sleep for like an hour. So it's 10 o'clock at night. I set my alarm for 11 o'clock at night, wake up. I re put on the sauna suit and the cutting weight suit. I like doubled up cause I was feeling so bad. Go down there and thinking, okay, good workout from like 1120 to like 12, 40 minute workout. We're going to get the rest of this off. So thinking I can get like two pounds off. So I start going, I ran for 20 over 20 minutes, elliptical for a little bit. And it was on the bike and my coach comes in. I was just with uh, Paul and my coach comes in and he like feels my head, feels my chest. He goes, not sweating. Get back on the treadmill. I was like, oh my gosh. I, I was, I literally was like, I'm going to like trip and fall on this treadmill. So I hurt myself or something. And then he, he literally says that he goes, don't fall on this treadmill and hurt yourself. Don't do it. And I was like, oh shoot. So he, so he made me hold on the treadmill. And I did treadmill sprints for another 25 minutes and um, I finally started sweating and like, uh, I only lost, I lost like, uh, two pounds, but now it's, it's like 1245 at night. So I go to bed at 1am and I'm like 1.2 over now, but thinking we got Wayne's at seven, I'm not going to lose my full pound of sleep. So I wake up at five. So I've slept for four hours, wake up at five, check my weight. I'm like point, I'm like point seven over now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can do this. Mm. And, uh, so I get back downstairs. I start, uh, jogging. I double cramp up and then I start biking and like, I start sweating and I was like, Oh my gosh. And I made the weight and it was like, it was so such a relief. And I kept selling myself. Like when it got to around midnight, I was just like in eight hours, this can be over. Like no matter what happens in eight hours, the suffering is going to be over. Mm -hmm. And I made the weight and like, then I, I had uh Joseph Zargo next and like, couldn't feel my legs in the match. It just sucked. And like, and then I wrestled world team trials at the same weight. It sucked. I like had Ryan Jack first round. Couldn't feel my legs. Lost. And then I had Bryce Mantinona in the sec second first round on the backside. Beat him, which is crazy to think that you know the Fargo finals that year goes 0 and 2 at that world team bracket. <laughs> and um, then uh, wrestled Jackson Ar Arrington, who I beat like nine months prior. Beats the crap out of me. I was like, this, that's it. I like went home very upset. And I was like, I am not doing this weight anymore. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And like, so the whole summer, I just, I ate very clean, but a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up getting up to like 182 about. So, but just from, I weighed in at 143 that morning for the world team trials. And when I went back to the hotel room, I was 157. And I was like very thirsty and very hungry Jeez. still. Like, I just like, my body was like so out of cycle. And, um, yeah, it just really, really sucks. So then like, I remember like calling my coach, like, like I can't, I'm, I can't do 141. And he goes, well, like, you know, Joey's at 49. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm going 157. And like, he's like, he's like, really? I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to ever be in the forties again. Like I just hated wow. it so much. And like, and then like, so I had to step it up. I had to back it up and I gained a lot of weight, gained a lot of muscle. And, but at the same time I was still running and stuff. So they had like, um, they had us, I think they wanted to kind of test me a little bit, but when we got back, we ran like a three mile loop mm -hmm. and like, I took like second, but then the next day we're like six mile loop. We'll see what happens. And like, so we do it. And, um, I ran cross country in high school. My family's like all runners and stuff. Like my, a lot of my cousins went to like Mississippi state, like track sure. and like stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, I, have run I got runner's blood. And like, we did a six mile loop. I was the first one back. Crazy. And like my, one of my coaches was like, never doubt you again. I'm like, that's right. That's right. <laughs> like I, I'm like, I, I was in shape. Like I, I stayed in shape. So like, 
yeah, it was like it was kind of fun like that that big jump, but I'm I'm happy where I'm at and it's just it's just a lot better and I tell a lot of people now I'm like like the cutting weight, I mean, just look at a lot of people. A lot of people do well not cutting weight like O'Toole, Keegan O'Toole doesn't really cut that much weight and um he does. Obviously, you got to be good. Like mm-hmm. you got to work on your wrestling and stuff, but um it's like you're always going to perform better when you're healthier. Like I cut weight in the past like up throughout high school, but I usually was doing it right. Um, but what do you, yeah. what do you have to say to those like kids or the, like the dads making these like youth kids cut, like cut, yeah. actually cut weight, not just watch what you're eating, but like cut weight. Yeah. Well, you just like say, go natural, like for youth, it really doesn't matter if you're really trying to get the goal to college. Like, yeah, it's cool. You can win like those cool things and like build a kid's confidence, like, which is cool. But honestly, if they can't like make it within like that week of just doing the pr- normal practices and just cutting back on a few things then it's like getting too much like Mm -hmm. you should never be when you're little like probably like five pounds like just adjusting five pounds then once you get over like a hundred probably you can move like okay six pounds maybe eight pounds if you can really get it off but like you should i don't think you should ever be really cutting off that much and i hope the trend continues with like less and less cutting weight Mm because kids just like look better you're in better moods i never got that either people would get in bad moods and like um be like oh, I'm in a bad mood, like, to, like, their girlfriend or something. Sure. And, like, like, oh, so I'm going to, like, be mean to you at some – I'm, like, why would you be mean to, like, the person, like, who's going to bring you happiness? Like, <laughs> like that's, like, the person who doesn't – isn't involved in wrestling. Like, you don't have to talk about wrestling with them. You can just go hang out and, like, relax. Like, sure. like don't be mean to them. And same thing with the parents. Like, there was a few times I snapped at my parents when I was cutting weight, and I was, like, oh, I felt so bad after I, like, had food in me. I was, like, I felt so bad. I'm, like, oh, I just – snap at them why'd i do that yeah, like sometimes i'll snap i'll like correct i'm like oh like say it a nicer way like <laughs> please get that for me like <laughs> like i'll be like yeah grab it i'll be like oh wait sorry can sure. you get that thanks like but yeah that's a big thing too like just try not to snap the wrong people when you're cutting weight too yeah. like because obviously you're not diet and you're not feeling the best all the time but yeah i try to avoid cut the cutting weight doing things like a lot more where you can naturally get down mm-hmm. get lean feel good and maybe it's like once you get lean, then like you cut off the last few pounds at the end, like a yeah. little bit. But that's going to be a good big thing for the two hour weigh-in now instead yeah. of one hour. One hour was ridiculous. It's scientifically impossible to get what you need in you. Like I'm no scientist, but I know it's scientifically impossible <laughs> to get what you need in that one hour. Yeah. Like that's just crazy. Yeah. So have you ever used like the dopa bands at all? I actually haven't. Not at all. Really? Not at all? Not at all. Have you seen them like online on Instagram? Oh, yeah, I've seen a, I've seen a ton of them. I, I tell you what, I, I literally do use these every day. Like I wake up and I just use them just to feel loose and you can literally get a great workout in after practices. They're perfect. Now we actually have a dope, gift for you a full pack, a full pack for real, for real full package. <laughs> what color? We have a full one in this stretcher limits dopamine bag. We got the, uh, the bolt band, the sh- yellow stretch band, and then we have a full size dopamino one for you. I don't know what color we have for yeah. him. Dude, I'm actually so pumped. I've seen these and like one of my teammates actually just got them and he's like started using them. I was like, sure. I like didn't really know what they were, but I like kind of knew what they were. Oh my and, God. And so, so that one's thicker. So it's better yeah, for your weight. Mad thick. Yeah. Oof. See the one around your stand is like kind of smaller. That's, yeah. You know, you can still use them if it's smaller, but like the bigger ones, this I is mean, sweet. They get, and now let's challenge you to see how strong you actually are. Are you ready to stretch your limits? Yeah. Let's try to All beat right. this. Freaking... Break the bolt. You get a hundred dollars. Okay. I'm going to get close. And you have three tries. You have three tries. Three tries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are actually scared of me. Can I twist it? Yeah, you can do, do whatever twist? you want. Okay. Just no scissors. Okay. There's me, no way you can. wipe it. off my hands. You'd be stronger than Ben Keeter, world champ. Okay. Ben, count your days, dude. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, okay. oh, God, dude. One more try. Nice you try. got one okay. more try. Got mentally prepared. Hold up. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude. I'm there. I can feel it. <laughs> I just got I'm a strong man, dude. That's all I am. Strong man. Oh. Get oh. it. Get it. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Jeez. Oh, that's actually crazy how that's, that didn't break. Oh, that's so stupid. Dude, this wow. is powerful. Dang. That is so I'm so close. I'm gonna go home tonight and constantly if try br- to do this. Send me a video if you break that, because that'd be crazy. If I break th- yeah, no feet either. <laughs> yeah. Well no, you can do feet. Oh I, I shoot, maybe could have got he can deal a four oh five and he couldn't do it. You didn't get with feet? <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I can get maybe with feet, but with I'll feet, try. yeah, but feet's kind of feet's kind of cheating. Yeah. I want I want to do it with yeah. my hands, my bare hands. Just rip it, yeah, yeah. That was that is crazy. Yeah. Did that get close? I feel like Ben, ben wasn't giving close. full effort, dude. No, I don't think he was, but he I, he looks like he got more. Really? Like yeah. I thought I I had full expand. I looked. I did the MJ poster, dude. <laughs> that was close. All right, Your hands was, were like kind of slipping it. Dude, yeah, that. I know. That's the thing. It's not like good of a grip. Yeah. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it. You should try it. I think you get close. Well, Maddie, don't feel bad because literally the strongest people in the world cannot break that. Um, so ho- hopefully you do appreciate the bag. It's worth over a hundred dollars of stuff. This is awesome. If you guys this would like so to, awesome. of course, check out Dopaminio and increase your like your fitness goals. Use them. I use them every day. I, I really suggest it. They're perfect. They're resistance. Resistance is it's so much better on your body. You were talking about the bench. Yeah. With Ritz resistance, you can do so many things. So shout out to Dopaminio for that. Boom. So yeah. Also, we have one last one last gift for you. Unless you have anything else to say. Anything else to say? I'm trying to think. What were we talking about before? Actually, d- just, just wait. Bring out bring out the plaque. Okay. You can think on it. I actually get this. Yes. I said, I thought I saw this. I <laughs> thought it was just for show, yeah. dude. Number twelve. Dude, this is sweet. This is gonna be like legendary. Like this, like Joe yeah. Rogan hit his two thousandth. I'm well, twelve, you're the baby. That's crazy. I'm the twelfth man. That is so freaking <laughs> awesome. Let's go. Holy moly, this is sick. So Shu put his blood, sweat, and tears you into that. You made this. This is awesome, dude. Holy crap. This is so sick. Okay, bet. Any last <laughs> words for the pod? Any last words? I'm trying to think what we were talking about earlier that you were like, wait, save it for the pod. Oh, that you go to um church with the. Oh yeah, so that's a big thing. You can plug this in whenever you want. Sure. Just throw this in whenever. But, yeah, so I go to church with Pat Smith, and you thought it was the Pat Smith, from the Greco mm-hmm. guy. And I was like, no, Pat Smith, first ever four-time NCAA champ. And um, he is he is awesome. And he is a guy who you could seriously talk to all day. So I go to church with him, and then him and his family invite us over and whoever else comes to church with us um, for brunch. And they'll just – she'll mrs smith will just deck out like the food and everything like biscuits and gravy she made homemade cinnamon rolls and they were they were incredible and um they live they have two houses so like they have a house and then they have like another house just behind their house to like hang out in i guess and um they're good friends with uh greg hatcher who's like our main donor pretty much who basically made lil rock the team like he's the reason lil rock is here today like he's a big reason so um, he, he won the college, like he loves wrestling. He's a big fan of it. And he said he, he brought Pat Smith over and, um, to help run like the kids club and stuff. And then he got uh coach Erisman to come in to run the Lil Rock. And he, his, he is like, does very, very well for himself. So, um, in the off season, we'll actually train at, on his ranch estate and wrestle, um, in, he's got a whole wrestling facility on his estate. And he's got a whole gymnastics facility, a whole football field, a whole softball diamond, and, like, just on his property. Jeez. Yeah. And then for, like, every once in a while, um, we'll go to his lake house and we'll hang out there and have, like, a whole lake day. And it's absolutely, like, insane. This house sleeps 60 people because it has, like, um, it has all these bunk beds and they have, like, flat screen TVs. Like, it's insane and then like um a waterfall like through like that goes like right outside the house into like a huge pool and we're just like what the heck is this place like when we showed up like we were texting our coaches we were like well what how do we know which house is and he goes it'll be the biggest one there and we're like okay and we're we're keeping it to that and we showed up we were like this is incredible incredible like it was so much fun and like but he is a big help. He he comes to all our duels. He's always sitting like Matt's side. That's a cool thing with the Rock Gun too. You can sit Matt's side, sure. like all the way around it. And um, but yeah, he's a huge help, and he's the whole reason basically Lil Rock's Lil Rock wrestling today. So because he brought us all there. So that's a and the facility too. He helped us with that huge facility with like the four mats, sauna, all in weight room. He's awesome. But yeah, that is so insane. That's crazy. Yeah. Man, well, this has officially been our longest podcast. Yeah, Thank let's you. do it. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for driving. Yes. No problem. Thank Dude, <laughs> I did not mind driving at all. Yeah. What? I was going to say um, say something in the comments if you stuck around this long. Oh. Did he stop it? 
Just cut it. Nah, just cut it. 